Hello, welcome to my student support system. In today's class, we will discuss about levels of prevention. This is very important lecture and in many times it is asked in examination, theory as well as practical. This lecture is in English and if you want to study in Hindi, just click on i button and you will get link of Hindi lecture or you can directly visit to channel my student support system. What are the levels of prevention? Here we are discussing the levels of prevention which can be applied for both communicable as well as non-communicable diseases. So in examination generally it is asked that what are the levels of prevention? Prevention includes a wide range of activities aimed at reducing the risk or threat to the health. There are four levels of prevention. These are primordial prevention, primary prevention, secondary prevention and tertiary prevention. We will discuss them one by one. So first is primordial prevention. Primordial prevention is a new concept of prevention. Mainly it is used for chronic non-communicable diseases. Primordial prevention is defined as the prevention of development of even risk factors. For example, obesity and smoking. These are the risk factors for development of heart disease. So, we prevent the development of these obesity and smokings. Interventions to prevent the development of these risk factors are known as primordial prevention. It includes health education to children to discourage them adopting harmful lifestyles which may lead to obesity and smoking. It may be achieved by individual and mass health education. Second one is primary prevention. Primary prevention aims at the prevention of diseases or injury before it occurs. This is achieved by preventing the exposure to the hazards that causes disease or injury. Alerting unhealthy or unsafe behavior that can lead to disease or injury and increasing resistance to the disease or injury. These are the basic primary preventions. Primary prevention may be achieved by the measures designated to promote general health and well-being and quality of life of the people by specific protective measures. Example includes education about the healthy and safe habits such as uh, social distancing, hand hygiene, respiratory hygiene to prevent respiratory tract infections. Another important intervention for primary prevention is vaccination for a particular disease as this will increase the immunity of the host against that particular disease. For example, BCG is given for tuberculosis. It, is, uh, it also includes health education and uh, for this primary prevention. The concept of primary prevention is now being applied for prevention of even chronic diseases as well such as coronary heart disease, hypertension and cancer based on the uh, elimination or modification of the risk factor of the disease which includes uh, high risk, obesity, smoking, sedentary life etc. Primary prevention is very useful in preventing the diseases. The developed countries succeeded in eliminating a number of communicable diseases like cholera, typhoid, dysentery and controlling several others like plague, leprosy, tuberculosis, not by the physical intervention but mainly by raising the standard of living that is primary prevention. Secondary prevention. Secondary prevention can be defined as the interventions which control the progress of disease and to prevent complications. The main intervention include early diagnosis by screening and testing 
as well as prompt treatment so that we can reduce the number of cases or carriers as early as possible and to reduce the chances of disease transmission. In secondary prevention, we try to restore health by early treatment and it may also protect others in the community by getting the infection from the source because source is treated as early. A secondary prevention needs clinical medications for, for hospitalization and proper care during treatment. Secondary prevention is important in controlling the transmission of disease but it is more expensive and less effective than primary prevention. The drawback of secondary prevention is that the patient has already been subject to the uh, mental tension, physical pain and community to lose the productivity. Tertiary prevention. Tertiary prevention is defined as the interventions to reduce the or limit the disabilities, minimize suffering caused by the disease and promote the client's adjustment in the society like rehabilitation. The main interventions in tertiary prevention includes health promotion, disability limitation and rehabilitation. Tertiary prevention is achieved by the health education, environment modification, nutritional interventions, lifestyle changes, disability limitation, rehabilitation which includes medical rehabilitation, vocational rehabilitation, social rehabilitation, psychological rehabilitation and creation of support groups and self-help groups. So this is the tertiary prevention. Thank you students for watching this video. You can uh, subscribe the channel for latest updates, updated videos and you can like Facebook page and for making your notes you can visit mynursingstudents.blogspot.com here you will find the contents. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram and join Facebook group Nursing Notes. Thank you. Have a nice day.